Hi everyone, welcome to our first Creative English Club meeting of this season. We're so excited to have you guys here and I really hope you enjoy it. Today is our pleasure to receive here uh, James, who is the Creative Marketing and Brand Director for Duolingo, which is very fitting uh, since we're going to be talking about language and learning about creativity here and practicing our English. So welcome everyone. <laughs> Thanks um, for the introduction, Polly. So uh, if you're new here, we are uh, the Red Hook Creative Community, and this is a space that's going to be a series of talks so we can practice our English and learn more about creativity, brand, marketing, and so much more while practicing the language and getting more comfortable in our shoes so we can all take that step like, forward into our careers. So before I introduce our lovely mediators here, I'm just going to go and uh, present myself first, a very quick overview since I'm going to be hosting all those meetings with you and receiving your lovely guests. Uh, so my name is Mari. I'm currently based in Toronto, Canada. I'm a marketing intern at American Express here, and it's been a great journey. I'm studying marketing here, even though I'm originally from Brazil. So I'm very excited to bring along everyone with me on this international journey. So. Uh, I will call on our first mediator here, which is, you know, all our mediators are part of the Red Hook Creative community. So, uh, Guy, if you want to come onto the stage and introduce yourself. Yeah, and then we have James here, who are a guest speaker. James will introduce you in just a second. Uh, if, Polly, if you can pull on uh, Guy, Guilherme. Hello. Perfect. Hi, Mari. Hi, James. Uh, my name is Guilherme, as, <laughs> as you said. Um, I'm a creative art director. I'm living in Brazil, but I'm working for Sao Paulo. And now I'm here. I'm very excited with, with this first talk to, to increase your English. And that's all. Let, let, let it go. Amazing. Uh, next, we have Elena. If you can come on and present yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Elena. I'm a copywriter based in Sao Paulo and I work at OK Studio. It's an agency here and I love it. And I'm really, really excited to, to have this talk with James. Awesome, thanks Elena. So, and now we have Vitor. Come on on, Vitor. Hello everyone, I'm Vitor. I'm currently living in Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, and I am an art director as well. And I'm working in, uh, in an agency in Sao Paulo, working with beers, especially the Heineken Group beers. And I'm really excited and a little bit nervous to be here today, but let's go guys. Amazing, we love that, being nervous, but still coming and still like jumping in. Uh, next we have Bruna. Hi guys, I'm Bruna. I'm a copywriter in advertising. I work for Wise Educação here. It's a multinational company. And I'm also here to participate on English Club and practice my English. I'm so excited to be here. Lovely. Thank Thanks, you. Bruna. All right. And last but not least, we have Diego. Hey guys, how are you? I'm Diego. Um, I'm from Peru. I work as a freelancer strategy. So Basically, working a little bit with Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Argentina, so glad to meet you all. Amazing. We're a very international group here. Love to see it. Thanks, Diego. Um, yeah, so I, I would just call Gilevi here back again so he can introduce our guest. Gilevi here as well? Yeah. All right, perfect. Hello, James. Where is James? So yeah. So first of all, we we would like to say thank you uh, to Celina and thank you, James, uh, for accept this 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 invitation. It is go it is going to be an amazing experience for us. Um, talk uh, directly. 
uh, to a person from uh, uh, United of States and talk about our job because in general we, we learn English in simple things and we we, we never talk in, a, in about business about um, other things in your market and I hope I would like to 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 speak like Mari perfectly, but <laughs> it is a good experience to increase your English and to learn from you and from others. So I would like to say thank you. We we are glad to to stay here, to be here with you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Very excited to be here. And everyone's English so far has been fantastic. So um yeah. <laughs> Agreed. And like one thing that I always try to, you know, bring back to like our group here is that there is like not really a bad English. Like you can have accents, but that's still the language. So it's it's lovely that to see everyone just jumping in and speaking, which is something that can be very hard once we have like the little voice in our heads constantly saying that like we could keep doing better, but we're always improving. So that's all that matters. Uh, James, I know that we inter introduced you wonderfully, but if you can give us like a brief overview of what you work on, who you are and your career, that would be lovely. Of course, happy to do so. And I feel like I should have practiced my my uh, my Portuguese a little bit better <laughs> to be able to say something, but hola a todos. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you for having me. Very excited to be here. I'm uh, really excited about everything that um, you all are doing as a, as a uh, a club and program. I think it's, you know, it's something that has really excited uh, me, especially working for, for Duolingo, right? Our company was founded on the mission of making the best education, making it more available to everyone else. And I really appreciate the, uh, you know, the, the, the focus and trying to better everyone's career and, and make us a little bit more global and more connected. So thank you for, for having me again. Um, happy to speak a little bit about my career, how I kind of got here at, at Duolingo uh, with this lovely owl here duo. But um, yeah, I'm based in New York, actually. I've been here for oof, over 13, 14 years now. Um, I initially, what got me into design, marketing, and advertising was I had an interest um, in, in music and bands initially, and I wanted to design lots of t-shirts for, for the different bands uh, that, that I re really loved. So I was looking, I was like, okay, how do I do this? I started to learn some tools when I was in high school and that took me to learning Photoshop, a lot of Adobe programs. And that got me into uh, the School of Visual Arts, which is based in New York. So I moved to New York City, um, uh, I don't know, years ago uh, to, to study design and, and art direction at the School of Visual Arts. I studied there for about four years or so. Uh, while I was there, I took a, several during, uh, internships at design studios. And uh, during that time, I had a lot of loans, student loans to pay off, uh, which was a driving force for me to really do good in, in school and really, you know, Excel so that I could actually get a job and pay off all the loans that um, you know allowed me to to really uh, you know study and, and and succeed. So I went to school actually um, with someone who uh, was able to get an internship at BBDO in New York. I was in you know a, a, a bigger agency, and they they started they started an internship there, and they introduced me actually. Um, to, to someone. So before I actually graduated uh, school at the School of Visual Arts, I had a position uh, as an intern over at, at BBDO, which was really exciting, where you know I, I started off working on small, smaller campaigns. I found my little niche spot, which was to create more social digital activations. A lot of the agency at the time didn't really have that expertise uh, there. I was very focused on TV commercials, larger brand films, and was, was a fun a fun area of opportunity and challenge there, but was able to quickly go over to, uh, uh, spent six years there actually, producing a lot of work for a lot of clients, uh, great work there, jumped over to, um, to ZocDoc actually, uh, our brand side, which was very interesting, and really focused in on 
um, on you know trying to understand what the brand side would be. I think after six years at BBDO New York on the agency side, um, it was very just I, I wanted to learn more and I wanted to figure out where where could I stretch my skill set. So we started over at, at ZocDoc. Uh, I only spent a year there because I realized that it was a big shift um, going from agency to brand world. And it was a startup which was focused on finding, um, finding or helping people find a doctor. And what they ended up doing a few months in was actually their business model changed for me, where instead of you know creating campaigns and marketing to get everyone to use the service, they realized that um, they could actually just go after a hospital network and get um, doctors on the platforms that way. And uh, that was a very interesting business shift uh, going on brand side and as a startup and realized how, uh, how fast uh, that space can change. So I only spent a year there because I also realized I needed to learn a ton more than I, than I thought I knew. <laughs> so I went over to VaynerMedia, which was an agency based in New York, uh, really focused on media, and uh, not sure if several of you know, um, founded by Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, um, really entrepreneurial figure, but was able to work on a ton of different clients, really start to oversee different teams, or I almost led a team about 15 to 20 people, um, um, working on several different clients there. Uh, spent about three years there, and then someone from Duolingo reached out, someone that I knew from years ago when I was back on the agency side, they uh, they reached out to me and saying, hey, there's an opportunity. Would you be interested in going brand side again? And for me, what I was really excited about, this is now a little over two years ago, um, uh, they they reached out. And for me, you know, I, a lot of people don't know this, but my parents are actually immigrants from Poland and they immigrated to the U.S., did not speak any English um, whatsoever. So for me, it was my first language was actually Polish. It wasn't English. And I grew up speaking, I grew up learning English through school, but my parents didn't really know any. And for me, just language is just inherent in my DNA. And I really appreciate that. And again, as I mentioned, our company was founded by, you know, with a mission to make education, make language more accessible to everyone in the world. So uh, with a mission like that, I couldn't say no. Um, so that's my, sorry, maybe took a bit too long there to explain all of that, but it's Kind of how I got here, a bit of the history and background, and yeah. No, that was perfect, and I feel like you know you could talk about it for ten, fifteen, like half an hour because it, there's like just so much of an entire career to put into like brief words, but you did so uh, very nicely. So thank you for that like overview, and I I love that uh, about Duolingo. Like when we talk about like learning English, because we have people in our community that are just starting, but we also have like those lovely people that are here with us today that already have a certain level but just want to keep going and i feel like duolingo makes it possible for people who have like you know the zero knowledge to jump into something higher so uh that's really something valuable and i love that you that ties back with you know your personal story because when you believe in your company that's when you do the best work i find so that's very interesting thank you for sharing that um yeah and i think for yeah go ahead yeah, I, I, I just would say that uh, what, what is the most um, great thing that, that, that all this story that, that you told is, uh, of course, your, your background, but uh, that you understand exactly how is uh, speak no other language. For example, you, you, you did, uh, you, you, you went through all the challenges to, to learn a new language. That's why it's, uh, <laughs> you're the, the perfect person to be um, ahead this 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 company, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank nice. you. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it, I, I feel like knowing another language really opens up your world and, and you're able to sort of connect on a different level um, with, with others, um, almost in a way that you almost know what someone else is trying to say sometimes. <laughs> that's very true um yeah and i love that you went through basically everything uh we get people from startup and we get people from agencies and brand and like you kind of experience a little bit of it all and i found that that's very enriching i can i can imagine how how the changes must have been for you so yeah that's very interesting i'm gonna call up next uh elena so she can ask her question and then we can just keep up 
Yes. My question is a little bit more practical uh, and something that I'm very, very curious to know. Uh, using humor has become a key to success on TikTok and Duolingo does it perfectly. And I'd like to know how was the building process of Duolingo's profile on the social media? Please tell us how to do it greatly and perfect as you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, there's definitely a lot of people involved <laughs> in order to make something successful, but I'll, I'll maybe start to, to first mention our, our strategy, right? So as a, you know, as, as a company with a gamified way to learn a language, um, we, we have this, this innate strategy that is focused on the idea that when you have fun in doing something, you're able to go further. So, right, when's the last time you tried learning, I don't know, anything, when it's fun and you enjoy it, you're more likely to learn more or do better at it. And, you know, that, that is really the, the marketing brand strategy that we have of the idea of when you have fun, you go further. And, Again, because that's based on our, our product, it's based on how um, we know motivations work with when, when it comes to learning anything. So our, you know, fun is really in our DNA and it's, it's really the way that we extend ourselves into all of our marketing channels. And we really see fun as being a key motivator, um, right? You don't want anything to be boring or even just very straight. You want it to be something that you want to enjoy. So for us, you know, when we first start out on TikTok, I think most people actually don't know this, but we started last year, we did a program with TikTok around uh, learners and we partnered with different creators on the platform on TikTok. And, you know, we partnered to do educational content. And to be honest with you, it worked, it reached people, but it was very straightforward and we actually, we wanted to see more results and, and more interesting results. So we actually paused on the platform for several months and we didn't do anything. And what we then did was uh, we were working on um, uh, a project where we just decided to test something. So we put, we took Duo, put him in the, or in the suit. We threw him into Times Square in New York, <laughs> busy time and, you know, had just had fun trying to get him to do lessons in Times Square. And it was, you know, it was our first test of a video that ended up doing really well, all, all organically. And so we're like, okay, there's something here. But what we did was we then paused on that again. And internally on our side, Zaria, who I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with, she's almost had her own stardom, <laughs> almost as much as duo now. Um, but she's our phenomenal uh, social media uh, manager here. And, you know, she decided to say, you know what, I want to try TikTok again. Let's start launching this last year in October. And this was very proactive to say, you know what, I think we know what can work. We've seen sort of success here. And really, it was a great strategy of just creating content that was fun, on trend, and looking at what conversations are happening on the platform, what's trending, and then inserting ourselves into those conversations. It's not about us trying to make something happen or our own challenges or our own thing. It's It takes so much effort to try and create something else on your own when you could have a presence and just join in and almost hack a conversation. So what we've done in our, our strategy um, has really been to try and get duo in a lot of conversations and and really be as human as possible and create content that we know others will enjoy and share and now i if i'm i believe i have the stats right i think we're still probably the most followed brand right now on TikTok, and that happened in the course of several months um all because honestly it was um you know just that that very simple idea and you know zaria definitely can say this much better than i can and um please feel free to watch any videos that she does because she yeah she um she she does a great job of explaining it but it's really about in uh, inserting ourselves in conversations uh where we know we can have fun right we don't need to always be educational in every single um piece of content that that we create oh, totally and it's it's really nice to see that you don't you don't need to to have the perfect 
camera shooting and everything and it's so natural and you do it so uh instinctively and it, and it, it goes it and and i think that this is the the it's part of this this success this huge success mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks so much for that answer, James. I feel like everyone's so like fascinated by Duolingo, like especially on TikTok, myself included, just because it feels so natural. Like I said, everything is so like organically like planned and it's just like so nice to see. It's like you can see that the team who is like putting all those videos together is also having fun. So yeah, that's great. I'm just gonna do like a quick follow-up question then. You can answer it like very briefly uh, if you want, but just like what do you think in your personal experience is the most fun part about working with Duolingo? Ooh, fun part. Um, ooh, I would have to say working with with a lot of smart people here. Um, I know that it's, it may sound cheesy, but we have an insane amount of smart minds and everyone brings their own personalities to every project and some you know amazing thinking so I, I would definitely say the people and being able to be connected to everyone we have a, a wide global network of different personalities different languages people all over the world and that that, that usually excites me and I, I would say that's the most fun also free lunches yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing and I can relate to that like food is always nice so but that's amazing like the people can make, really make a company so I'm glad that was your experience and next we have Vitor. Vitor, if you want to come on in and ask your question. Hello, guys. Hello, James. Um, so we have a lot of young creatives here today starting their careers. So I would like to ask you, uh, what, do, what advice would you give to your younger self and when you were starting your career and consequently for the people who are starting their careers today? Ooh, yes. Question I would tell my younger self. I always love these. Very, very reflective. Um, I would say there's a few things. Um, first and foremost, I'd say being kind is probably the most important piece. Um, we, we actually have a, a philosophy here at our company, um, which is we rather have a hole than an a-hole <laughs> because we really pride ourselves on finding people who are just kind and, I, I will say the reason why I got my start uh, at BBDO as an intern was because I worked or I was in a project group with someone at school and she, uh, Stella, will always remember, she, she said, hey, do you want to come join this, you know, an internship or do you want to want to meet this creative director here because there may be a position. And honestly, if I wasn't kind with her like that entire year my entire career would be completely different. And I think it's important to just keep in mind that kindness just goes a long way because you never know who you're going to work with later on in the future. Um, I have people who who hired me that now I'm hiring them um, on the client side um, and brand side. So I think I think that is, you know, 10 years makes a lot of time in, in a career. And again kindness is always starting out is always the one thing i would uh, re recommend i would then say anyone starting out now i think one thing that also has helped me was taking you know when starting out taking a job opportunity um over for opportunity and the creative opportunity over money is definitely worth it and i would tell you when i first started I was eating yogurts for lunch because that's the only thing I could afford um, my first year uh, interning. And I would I would say this, you go to fill in your portfolio with great work because when you have great work, you can ask for more for more money, the more, you know, more awards, you do better work, you get awards, the awards will help give you access to to money. And honestly, I followed that during my entire career, you know, never I've never made a, a position jump for money. And of course, I definitely needed it. I had to pay all those loans. <laughs> but I think that that's one that that's that's definitely point number two, I would say, is go for the creative opportunity that will make you happy. And, and I would say, just make sure that you're also thinking about your mental health, because that's extremely important. You don't want to burn yourself out um, 
that's because then you can't do any work at all. <laughs> so being mindful of your mental health is, is really, really important as well. Thank you, James. Yeah. And that's great advice. I love how you mentioned also, like in your personal story, you came from like a band loving background. I find that so many people in the creativity like field um, come from like some sort of like arts passion. And it's always nice to see like that tying back into the work. Um, so really like if you're already like loving something and like trying to put it into communication and out there in the world, you might as well like love it fully. So that's uh, that's great advice. Thank you for that, James. Yeah. Next up, we have Bruna. Hi. Um, so James, my question is, when you're hiring, what are the creative skills that you value the most for your team? Yeah, great, great question. Um, I feel like your dog will also want to ask a question in there. <laughs> yeah, he's very participate. He likes to, to be in a conversation. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say right now, more than ever before, creative skills matter, but so do some of the other skills outside of creative skills. And, you know, I, I would definitely say, um, going back to my first point about being kind, really under being empathetic, I think as just a, as a, as a, a human, um, a, as a person, I think is, is really key. Um, so there's, there's, there's a few leadership skills that we really look for, or at least that I look for when we're hiring for a position, whether it's on my team here now at Duolingo or, or in other places before, um, to me, almost the creative skills are a necessity, but then outside of the creative skills, you then need to have the leadership skills or the emotional intelligence to be able to have conversations with people, take critical feedback, um, and and you know being able to own projects and own where where you may fall short but uh to go back to your question about creative skills um i would say right now what has been very key for for me is uh when it comes to again more traditional creative types is really understanding how we can understand culture and what is trending right now or what is happening what is the what, what are people talking about and being able to understand what is happening in the world and then being able to take that and apply it to a brand or how does our brand fit into the conversations that are happening right now in the space and you know you can look at that when you look at someone's portfolio of work of what types of projects they have but you could also look at where they spend their time and you know are they on social channels where they you know what are they into i think that's almost as important in um from a creative skill set than just the work in your portfolio, because you really want to get a, you really would want to have someone join your team that really understands the full spectrum and kind of lives that life. Um, and, and is really interested in, 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 let's say creating ideas or doing things on the side. So the, the, my, my favorite, or my favorite, I can't say favorites, but my, um, <laughs> I would say uh, a lot of the, the team that I've hired before have come with, entrepreneurial sides where they have a side business or a side hustle. And I think that for me just really showcases how driven they are, how passionate they are and uh, for, you know, for, for specific ideas. So that is definitely really hard to find, you know, for us, as I said before, it takes a very long time for us to find um, someone on a team because we really look for just the perfect fit. And we also adapt the roles around who they are as well. So we don't like to just find a role, say, hey, you got to be good at this, and that's it. It's it's a great mix. So, yeah. So it's not about just creativity. It's soft skills and strate strategic thinking also. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think soon <laughs> AI will be able to write headlines or, you know, uh, there's new features now where, you know, you type in a few words and there's new comps that are made with just typing in words. And I think what's really important for anyone starting out now is to be able to have that critical thinking and the strategic thinking to be able to um, understand culture because there's no AI for that yet. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, James. Yeah. We love to hear that. And especially what you said about like having like a side business like that's something that i find like old culture like old corporate culture you like never really grasp that because 
it's usually seen as something that's going to take away your attention or take away your time. And I love that you guys actually encourage that because it really is like just exercising your creativity. Um, and just like a follow up question as well, like you mentioned about being part of conversations. And I've noticed that Duolingo like is not it doesn't hold itself back from being part of like social conversations that we have even regarding, you know, like, um, I don't know, like just talking about like different uh, conversations regarding gender and just like accepting everyone around you. And it's something I really admire about the brand. And I guess that ties back a lot into your role considering you also work actively with the brand itself and how to construct that. So um, how do you like, how do you say Duolingo sets its uh, kind of lines of, about like which conversations is up for the brand to be a part of and which ones maybe they should step back or how does that really work for, for the brand itself? Yeah, great question. I think for me, the beauty of this is we just experiment and we see where the line is. Um, so sometimes we'll cross the line and we'll know what that line is um, based off of feedback from people or from, from the social space. You know, we, we've we actually implemented uh, the, over the last um, several, several now maybe two months or so, We've we've partnered with with a group around an external team around uh, areas that maybe you know there could be potential conflict in where we don't necessarily want to you know discuss or talk about. Um, so there's there's a new sort of uh, I wouldn't say guidelines, but just directional areas that we know not to sort of go into anymore or across. And a lot of that can be somewhat too overtly, you know, and let's say sexual. Or, you know, there's a, you know, what, there's a lot of news happening right now in the world. Like, you know, we finding the right angles for us to talk about it in a way that doesn't make it seem like we're taking advantage of uh, an opportunity because you can also be canceled very quickly uh, as a person or as a brand. And we also take that very seriously. We want to make sure that we're, that, you know, anything we're doing is all, um, again, laddering back into our mission of making sure that we can make the best education and make it available to everyone. And part of that is inserting ourselves in conversations, but there may be a few that that can be uh, a little, you know, let's say controversial. And, you know, sometimes taking a controversial stance may anger an entire country or a community. And we need to play that balance of, you know, we don't want to get pulled out of a country because look at all of the people that are learning a language there, you know, based off of how we, um, based off a stance that we take. So it's, it's really finding that fine line of, of making sure that, you know, we, we, we can balance that. Yeah. I can imagine it's a very like delicate and fragile line, but I, I love to hear like how, how much like it's, you know, being taken into consideration uh, regarding all of that. So um, thanks for that answer. And next up, we have Diego. Hello, I'm back again. Um, James, I have a question for you. Can I relate it to the to the previous question? You uh, sorry, the previous answer you gave to us, and it's about a little bit of that diversity and the culture by itself. Because like <clears throat> sometimes I see in TikTok, maybe it's false or okay uh, about like the people making jokes of like. Um, People who born and raised in USA, that they say like most of the time they only speak one language. Okay, um, but we know like right now situations are changing, and there are more like people with like Latino and they, they live in USA, or like there is a mix of <clears throat> mix of races or or ethnicities or background. In this case, related to to the lingo, because we know that business by itself is about education and languages. Um, how much of that? breathe inside uh breathe within the culture of of duolingo or within your team gotcha uh, so to maybe to put that question back um it's just saying how does like diversity within our company yeah. how does that sort of come through within the content that, that we're creating yeah. yeah like how the aim of duolingo live within the the teams mm -hmm. or your belief in yep yeah you know i think um, to the point, uh, you know, I think for us, everything goes back to our mission of why we were founded. And, you know, our, our CEO, Luis, um, you know, he's from originally from Guatemala. And he, you know, he saw the impact that learning a language has on 
um, learning an another language such as English, you know, how, how that can impact your economic, your socioeconomic standing, whether that's getting a different job that can help pay you, you know, uh, you know, X amount more. Um, so everything for us goes back to actually the vision of the company, which is to actually, um, most people don't know this, but it's, it's to reduce economic inequality in the world. And we believe the best way in doing that is actually by learning languages and delivering the best education possible. And, um, you know, from that perspective, we have a very, um, let's say diverse group and we're, as we scale more globally, it's actually important for us to hire more global uh, talent so that it is reflective within our, um, our, our teams. So, you know, there's definitely still a lot that our company can still improve on, especially as a global company based in, you know, one main um, country like the US. But we do have, um, you know, opportunities and plans to sort of scale a little bit more. So we just opened up an office in Berlin. Uh, we also have our office um, still over in China and potentially opening up another one um, within the area. So we're, we're one sort of scaling from that perspective, but then also from a uh, diversity standpoint, we are making sure that we're hiring a more diverse group. Um, for me, again, as I kind of go back to hiring, I, especially as a language company, we, we also try and find someone who speaks another language or can tap into another space. So it's, it, it's kind of, it's beautiful, especially within our marketing team, how diverse we are, because we also have uh, country market managers in each of the countries. So in, in a lot of countries that we activate in. So um, yes, there's, there's definitely a, a ton there, but what, what's also interesting is, sorry to go back to your question on, on diversity and how that comes through content. We, we really make sure that we partner with the right agencies and the right partners within each community or country or market that really rep is representative of that market when it comes to diversity and the content that we create. So making sure that if we're working with an agency, you know, it's not all, you know, white guys, or, you know, if you go to another market, making sure that it's actually a well diverse team, because we know that it should be reflected so much so that it is representative of our learners. So uh, definitely, definitely making sure that, that, that we can do that. And we have, processes in place for that as well yeah awesome amazing yeah I, I made the question also because like i know there are some destinations where like people said oh but it's for example oh it's germany and i know that, that the country is super like super conservative and they just want people who only speak the language but mm -hmm. as far as you can as you say like <clears throat> doesn't matter where you came from as, as long as like you are part of this group of super diversity and there is like a common language where everybody can like speak there is like open doors in these scenarios right yeah thank exactly. you mm -hmm. amazing and i think that question also ties back to uh a question that we had like on youtube on where we're putting this live stream on which is from Rodriguinho. And he said that he has like this dream to work abroad, especially in the US and ask if we have uh, any like piece of advice to be hired. Maybe you can even like talk to us a little bit about uh, how can someone like even plan to work for a company as big as Duolingo? Would you recommend starting in your own country uh, if that's possible and making a transfer or maybe trying to get a job opportunity to start working virtually and in the hopes of in the future moving somewhere else? Yeah, well, I would say Everything in my mind always starts with a dream or at least a focus on, on where you see yourself. Um, and then you make sure that any decisions you're making will help you get to there or at least help you along that journey. Um, so I, I would say it really depends on circumstance, on your portfolio. You know, there's, there's a lot of variables, so it's hard to kind of just give one broad answer. But I would say that there's a lot of people in, you know, that in a very similar situation and in, in uh, scenario. And I would say, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, Fishbowl, um, the, it's a networking app within, within advertising. And I would really recommend if you're able to access that, I can tell you there's probably hundreds of people that have asked that exact same question. And you'll get different responses based off of what country you're in, your, you know, your demographic, your portfolio, and 
and, and yeah, and I think I think that that might be the best place to be able to answer that because you're going to get a wide, diverse range of answers from different people from different countries because that um, that that approach. Um, it, yeah, it's 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 hard to answer in a in in a one broad overarching way, but definitely it starts with a vision of where you want to be and making sure that you can take a small step now and making sure that will help you get there. So if that means creating different types of work that may be in a different language or that may be in the language that of the country you want to go to, that can already be a great first step in getting to um, that location. Could also be a great step in finding a larger agency that has a network in those other communities. Um, or it could just be messaging all the creative directors <laughs> in the one place that you want to work for and say, I love your work, I want to work for you, and just do that for, for four years um, <laughs> or however many years you want. That's awesome, especially like, I don't know, you seem like so approachable. You're a very like nice person to talk to. So um, I think that, like a lot of our creatives are probably going to like, you know, at least start following you on LinkedIn to have like this sort of, uh, you know, kind of a peek on the life of a uh, creative director in one of the places they want to work at. So uh, that's amazing. We have a question here from Lucas uh, that is also YouTube. So he's talking about like the animations that Duolingo does and how like amazing they are. And uh, he's interested in motion design. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that and how how the you know motion design is really playing a part in Duolingo's communications right now. Yeah, definitely. There's um. There's a ton that motion plays, um, you know, for us as a very uh, illustrative brand, right? We're not really photography or lifestyle driven. Um, a lot of it comes down to a lot of focus on our craft and our design and our illustrations of all of duo and our characters. And then making sure that once we have the illustrations and all of the artwork is at the quality that we need it to be, then making sure that it then comes to life through animation and motion. So we, depending on the types of projects, we actually, um, we focus on different types of projects in very different ways. We have our internal uh, animation team and studio within, uh, within Duolingo. We're based out of our headquarters actually in Pittsburgh, um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a different state. We, uh, the team there is focused on a lot of our internal, you know, videos and animations within the app and making sure that, you know, Duo is being as cheeky and fun or as quirky and, you know, annoying maybe sometimes in other cases. Um, and then, you know, that's a really small, small, nimble team. We then also work with a select group of animation studios um, to create content. And that content varies on, um, let's say some even in-app uh, videos or animation to sometimes uh, any marketing work that we do as well. And then we then work with larger, larger animation studios, um, primarily in some cases for marketing. And if we create a commercial or a video and a film, we're then going to a bit more of a higher end um, animation studio from that perspective as well. And um, I believe in the Latin area and, and also Brazil, we've worked with Le Cube uh, several times um, just as an animation partner, which again, we've loved working with them. They had really great craft. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few different ways that we approach animation and motion. And I think the other part of the question was like, how do you, uh, is there a potential, how do you get into working on brand side or potentially Duolingo? Um, there's a careers page. <laughs> so uh, take a look at our careers page. We, I believe we always have um, uh, illustrators and motion uh, designers and animators uh, positions available because we, we do strive to find uh, great talent there. So yeah, if there's anything there uh, that you see, um, definitely apply for it. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, I, I'm just like imagining people like just opening their tabs right now. <laughs> um, okay, so we have like one more question from YouTube, which is when talking about foreigners, that's something that I mentioned before in our talk, but really something that I see especially in Brazilians, it's like this arc to be perfect at English, like you can't have an accent or you have to pronounce everything perfectly before you even like start speaking. So uh, what, what do you have to say about that? Should we anyone worry about having a perfect English uh, so they can work in a company like as big as Duolingo or even work in the US in general? Like, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, 
I would say that it definitely can vary. The importance of language can vary based on the industry you're in and how I would say how fluent you would have to be. Uh, for us at Duolingo, again, depending on the role, depending on how fluent you may need to be, like if you're working in marketing and you need and you're overseeing a country, I don't know, let's say Brazil, your Portuguese has to be amazing and your English has to be pretty well as well. But I can tell you right now, for every, for a lot of the other uh, people on the team, um, you know, their English is is great, but of course there's always accents. I think that's, that's beautiful. That's what makes everyone more unique. And our point of view is that for, for many people, if not most people, fluency always isn't the goal of learning a language, right? Everyone has their own different goals. And what we really describe as a, your, your learner journey, you know, you don't, people don't, uh, start to learn to run or want to run to be a professional runner. <laughs> you know, there's people who are like, okay, I'm going to run to just exercise or I'm going to jog a little bit, or I'm going to do this. We see the same thing when it comes to language, you know, not everyone needs to speak at a C, you know, um, the, the, the best way possible that is extremely fluent with no accent. I think that's kind of a little ridiculous, I would say. So I think that the more, um, you know, the more that, you can figure out where you want to be on that language journey. You know, that's how we really appreciate and, you know, focus in on you know, the ability for someone to, to learn with us, but also to hire someone. So, you know, you may also, again, there's, depending on what you do, there's probably a level that you need to hit to be able to do your job well. But, you know, from a, from a, a, Structural standpoint, um, in my mind, at least if you can convey the ideas that you need and being able to sort of inspire a team, lead a team, um, you know, 100% fluency isn't really um, the main goal and, and, and doesn't need to be. But obviously, it helps if you can. <laughs> That's a perfect answer. I'm just going to open the floor again for our mediators if anyone has any additional questions. Yeah. It is nice to hear this because um, sometimes we get nervous or a little bit shy to, to, to express ourselves, um, in, especially in another language. But we need to try, I guess. <laughs> this is the best way to, to increase our English and, and to, to become a better speaker. And, but sometimes we, we create uh, <laughs> a big problem in our mind in, in that time to, to talk with other guy from uh, other country, for example, but we need to go through this to connect and to learn. And I guess this is the best way is living and experiment uh, <laughs> different conversations and learn as well. Awesome. And props for everyone who's here also, because I know it can be nerve wracking to have this first step in talking to someone who is uh, not a Brazilian or uh, not a Latino in general, I guess, since our mediators here are not all from Brazil. So uh, do we have any other questions from here before we move on to the next stage? I have a question. Um, yeah. It's more specific to a, to a Duolingo project uh, that I knew it happened like how was the, if you can tell us the story or share something with us about how Duo becomes Dua Lipa's friend or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is any fun story behind it? <laughs> Ooh. Because I know that Duo is always like falling in love with Dua Lipa, flirting in TikTok and like, I know he can share us something, some learning from that. Yes, absolutely love that question. Um, what What's actually been funny is inside Duolingo, like internally, are we've we've noticed how um, just a lot of people have just organically have said something about Dua Lipa and just language, right? Um, knowing how many languages she speaks and the language is actually part of her, her, you know, her, her DNA and, and who she is. Um, we've, we, we've made lots of jokes around, hey, do, how do we, can we partner with her? We actually reached out to managers back in the day. It was like several million dollars to do so. And we said, okay, we don't have that kind of money to spend on this. So let's just have fun and, and you know, have fun with it. So we, uh, 
I think the first time we ever called her out was actually in skywriting. We we sky so we had planes go over like um, New York City when our company went public. Uh, when we filed for IPO and we called out certain people by name to do their lessons and it like wrote different words in the sky through planes. And we called out some very popular names and we, we just called Dua Lipa like, hey, do your lesson. That was the first time we did that. I don't think anyone actually ever saw it because it was cloudy that day. <laughs> but um, that was the first time we called um, out Dua Lipa. And then really, we just started to see the organic conversation on social. And it just happened where we're like, hey, let's just make this a thing on TikTok, a narrative. And it's funny because the amount of people have, who have you know reached out to us based off of just that conversation is from their marketing side, from, the, from Dua's side and everyone else has been pretty fun. So someone else here had the idea to go to a concert to do his concert um, with a sign that says, marry me <laughs> do a, and you know, that went viral. It actually got on the news <laughs> here. So in, in the U S but um, yeah, it's definitely kind of how it started. It was just our names are so similar. Like why not? Um, it didn't start from a big creative insight or anything like that. <laughs> That's amazing. And especially I love how you had like this big idea and it was like out of budget and you still kind of like did it in your own way. That's uh, that's like so inspiring because I guess like creativity, like, there's not really a limit, but I guess a lot of creatives struggle with like budget lines or what is actually like possible or not. So it's very inspiring to see something that like wasn't possible on paper, but it kind of worked out. So that's great. I'm gonna move on quickly to our next segment, uh, which is just me like sharing a few expressions that either James said or someone mentioned. Uh, and a bit disclaimer here, like I'm not an English professor or teacher or anything like that. It's just something that I've kind of picked up in the conversation that maybe if we highlight is something that you can incorporate on your vocabulary as well. So, and also like James, feel free to uh, just add to anything that I'm gonna like share here. And you guys can let me know once it's there. All right, can everyone see? If someone can like just open their mic to tell me because I'm not seeing the screen, that would be great. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. Perfect. So first off, we just have the expression kicking off. I think I myself must have said that uh, at the start, which is us starting or launching something. Uh, that is something that I've seen a lot in uh, in my experience on working in corporate for, you know, like uh, like in a, a, can a Canadian based company, which is uh, just like, oh, this email campaign is going to be kicking off at this date. So it's something that like may seem like informal talk, but I actually see it pretty often in the business side of things. So thought I might highlight this as well. It takes effort. I think that's something that James mentioned a lot, which is uh, just a common expression that I really thought we should highlight, especially because making the parallel with Portuguese. Usually when we talk about uh, something that requires effort, we want to use the word need, like I need to put effort into this. But it takes effort. It is actually just like an easier way to express that. So uh, I think like that's something worth uh, trying to incorporate on your vocabulary as well. First and foremost, I think that's something that we use a lot, and it's not commonly taught in like uh, you know formal English lessons, which is it just means first and most important. Like before we start anything else, first and foremost, let's talk about this. So uh, that's something that if you enter the English corporate world, you're probably going to hear a lot. This goes a long way. Uh, it's such a nice sentence that you mentioned, James, like kindness goes a long way. And what does it mean for something to go a long way? It just means that uh, this can make, can make a difference, can really make a difference. So kindness goes a long way. It means that kindness can really make a difference. Manifesting, that's something that we've been hearing a lot lately, especially on social media. If you're on TikTok, you've definitely heard uh, certain trends about manifesting something into your life. And manifesting basically means like you're wishing and thinking of something so that it happens, hopefully. 
to be driven by something. Uh, I think the expression that I heard was lifestyle driven. Uh, we can use that as an adjective to things and it's really helpful. I love that about English that we can just twist words into uh, whatever we need them to be in certain cases. So just adding the little dash and then driven can really help you sometimes uh, just describe something. So for example, if something is lifestyle driven, this is guided by a lifestyle approach. And that's it for the expressions. Uh, if James wants to like compliment with anything, that would be uh, awesome, but feel free to not as well. <laughs> No, I, I love the I love calling out the different idioms and different phrases. I think it's it's very uh, very helpful um, for for a lot of people. And I feel like I I need to know one now that's at least in Portuguese that you have to share with me. <laughs> oh, in Portuguese. Um, I don't know. You guys are gonna have to help me. Let me think. <laughs> I didn't. I'm sorry. I put you on the spot. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. One thing that it's like it's not really an idiom but I, I feel like we have this expression that we don't use like as often as we should uh but we commonly use like english phrases in advertising in brazil and that's something that a lot of people like don't really like because especially people who are starting their careers it can be like hard if you don't have an english background so for example one word that we use in english still when having like conversations in portuguese is brainstorm and then like a, a lot of people replace that for a translation which is Ideas, which basically just means like, you know, a very heavy like storm of ideas. But it's a very funny word in Portuguese. I find that it's like not really used. So in this specific case, I just find it really interesting. So it's oh. ideas. Love that. Thank you yeah. for, for letting me. <laughs> no worries. Um, and oh, just like a curiosity, I can't believe we didn't ask that to you sooner, but how many English, how many languages do you speak or at least like have the intention to learn someday? Yeah, uh, I um so definitely English, um, Polish, I lost a little bit. So I've been picking it back up because uh, I really haven't used it. Um, I learned Spanish in in school, so I can get around. I think when I travel, uh, can get around pretty well and understand a good portion. Um, and actually, one funny thing was I learned a little bit of Portuguese when I was younger. One of my first jobs was working at a clothing store uh, for Diesel. And I remember in New York, just I think almost every other customer we would that would come in would be from Brazil. And I remember having to learn all of the words around highway, slow waste, un, un basha, or like, like literally everything around any language that you would need to describe genes in, in Portuguese. So um, definitely a tiny bit there, but I think that can definitely get better. <laughs> That's amazing though. I love to see it. Uh, and we're kind of like running out of time here. So I just like to say to anyone who's watching, uh, if you're ever wondering how you can be here on the stage with the amazing guests that we're going to be receiving each week, uh, all you have to do is like be a part of the Red Hook creative community and have a certain level of English so that you can feel comfortable asking questions. Uh, and that's it, just having availability and reaching out to us so we can have those connections. And the idea here, much like Duolingo, is just to make uh, the language more accessible so everyone can have a better opportunity to really insert themselves into the communications market globally, not only where you're based. So. Uh, that's all we have on. You can enter any of the Red Hook social media pages to find more information on that. And also reach out to our lovely mediators and James on social media, follow them, their work. Uh, everyone is on their own journey and it's always nice to pick up on things from each other. So uh, I think that's all. If James wants to leave a final message of advice for everyone watching, that would be great. And thank you so much again for taking the time to talk with us. Yes, thank you for having me. And again, I think um, one thing I would just say: be kind <laughs> as a, as a as a person. I think again, it goes a long way to to touch on a on a phrase that Mari you mentioned. Um, but yes, thank you very much for for having me here, part of for this, and excited um, for everyone here in their journey from a, both a language journey and also career journey. So um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions of any kind. Um, I'm here to here to help answer. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone who's watching and everyone who's participated. See you next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, James. Bye.